We might finally know what Devil Fruit Awakening really is, how it works, and why using it might mean paying the ultimate price for Luffy. Because the One Piece manga just dropped some bombshell information about the origin of Devil Fruits and how these fruits work. Which shockingly enough has gone completely unnoticed by many people due to the faulty English translations. I will link a video with the full literal translation at the end of this one. But in essence, Dr. Vegapunk reveals to the Straw Hats that Devil Fruits are born into this world by people's dreams and wishes for the future. And that Devil Fruit users are actually beings created from someone else's imagination that live in a different dimension, which is already huge, but on top of that, we have an epic clash between Luffy in his awakened Sun God Nika state and Rob Lucci, who has also awakened his Leopard Zone Devil Fruit that looks like this. Now, if you also thought that the fiery vapor thing around Luffy was unique to his Devil Fruit ability, well, turns out it's not. And with Lucci's awakening sharing so many similarities with Luffy's, we can finally deduce a lot about how Devil Fruit awakening actually works and why it is so incredibly dangerous. Now, to give you a very quick overview on what we already know about Devil Fruit Awakening so far, there are actually only 10 canon characters that have been officially confirmed as Awakened Devil Fruit users. Which is kind of crazy when you think about it. Four of them are the Jailers in Impel Down, and then we have Doflamingo, Katakuri, Law, Kit, Luffy, and Luchi. That's it. And you'll notice that half of them have only been revealed like super recently in the story. Now the first time that Awakening was ever officially mentioned was by Doflamingo during his fight with Luffy. He showed us that there was a completely new unknown level to Devil Fruit powers that increases their base abilities immensely. This power up depends heavily though on the type of Devil Fruit that you have eaten. Zone Fruit users can turn into some sort of animal like a dragon, a mammoth or a leopard. Which gives them all of that creatures you need abilities as well as generally boosted power and endurance. Logia Devil Fruit users turn their body into some sort of substance or element, such as fire, sand, or electricity. And Paramecia type Devil Fruits, kind of lazily, I guess, basically cover everything else, like Big Mom's and Brook's Soul Fruits, Whitebeard's Earthquake Fruit, or Sugar's ability to turn anything she touches into toys. And as Vegapunk explains, each of these fruits are created because someone keeps wishing for their existence. So the ability to turn into a dragon, the ability to freeze anything, or the ability to turn anything into a toy. Though how exactly this works is still a little bit unclear. Vegapunk himself claims that he's not interested in whether this is some sort of ancient technology or if it's some sort of magic created by a god. By the way, if you want to feel like a god, if you hit subscribe under the video, I will pay my respects by offering you high quality One Piece videos every single week. Now, as Doflamingo shows us, awakening your powers as a Paramecia type user means that your abilities would not only affect your body, but also the environment around you and amplify that ability's powers. As a result, Doflamingo himself was able to transform any objects around him into controllable strings that he could also manipulate without actually being in contact with them. Similarly, Katakuri was able to transform the area around him into mochi and control it as part of his body as well. Kit could affect his environment with his magnetic powers and meanwhile for someone like Law, instead of creating a room in which he usually controls objects, in his awakened state, Law can apply his manipulation field on objects like his sword for instance, which he then calls a crew. And this way, the sword now gains the same spatial manipulation abilities that usually only work with a room around himself. For example, using a technique called anesthesia, he enables his sword to spatially face through anything without ever having to make a wound or creating an incision. Which is pretty handy because you can thereby bypass any type of defense. When it comes to Logia fruit users, so far we've seen no officially confirmed example of one that's awakened. But it's wildly speculated that an awakened Logia fruit user would be able to not only turn his body into an element, but similar to Paramecia types, also affect the environment around them. For example, Punk Hazard's climate used to be a jungle island, but after the epic battle between Aokiji and Akainu, it ended up being half frozen wastelands and half fiery lava fields. Zone fruits, on the other hand, work entirely differently. While we first really learned about Awakening on Dressrosa, the first time this was actually mentioned as a concept was by Crocodile during Luffy's prison break from Impel Down. 
there, the four Jayla Beasts, a Cow, a Koala, a Reno, and a Zebra, all four are awakened zone type Devil Fruit users. This basically turns them into giant monster like versions of their respective animals, but with certain human features still remaining, like arms and legs. Now, these four awakened users act on pure animal instincts and have basically lost all their human will. And this is, of course, very similar to Chopper's monster point form before the time skip, at least, which has led to the generally accepted theory that Chopper's monster point is an artificially created state of awakening. However, we now have at least two more examples of awakened zone fruit users that are nothing like monster point Chopper or the impel down guards that completely lose their human nature. With Luffy's awakening of his mythical Nika devil fruit, we can definitely see a personality change in Luffy but he still is himself and aware of his goals. Whether that is defeating Kaido or keeping Luchi from murdering more people in Vegapunk's lap. Now, originally, this could have simply been explained by Luffy having eaten a human-type devil fruit, and a mythical one at that. But now, with Rob Luchi's awakening, we have confirmation that it's very much possible to retain mental control in your awakened state, and Luchi also doesn't look at all like the brainless monster versions of the impel down animals as well. Instead, his leopard has grown slim and powerful looking and even more human than his original hybrid form, I would say. And maybe most importantly, he has the same wheel of flame and smoke around him as Luffy has in his Gear 5 state. So it does seem that, at least for Zone Fruits, there are two paths to awakening. One where you completely lose control and the spirit of the animal consumes you, and one where you unlock that animal's full potential while still staying in control of yourself as a human being. Now, even though Luchi and Luffy are the only two characters with this form that have been officially confirmed as awakened, there are two more likely candidates here. The most obvious of the two is Yamato, son of Yonko Kaido. Now, she has eaten the mythical dog fruit model Okochi no Makami, which is a divine wolf. When she's facing her own father in battle because Luffy fell into the ocean, Yamato seems to be in her hybrid form. However, since we have now seen Luchi with the same slim figure and vapor coat around him, it's pretty safe to say that this is actually Yamato's awakened form. Which would make sense because how else would Yamato be able to keep her father at bay? And then Kaido himself is of course the second possible awakening here. To everyone's surprise, Kaido was never officially confirmed to have awakened his devil fruit, and so it is possible that he just never did. After all, the fight against Kaido was mostly a battle of armament and conqueror's hockey. Plus, Kaido also seems to lack that vapor coat that Luffy, Yamato, and Luchi have so prominently. However, Kaido does seem to have two distinct hybrid forms, one that looks a lot more like his human form, and one that looks a lot more like a dragon face with human features. That second one also has these flame patterns, like for example with his eyebrows, similar to the flame shape of Luchi's fur. Interestingly enough though, in his dragon form, Kaido actually does have that exame vapor coat and the flame-shaped fur, just like Luchi or like Yamato. So I would simply speculate based on just that, that Kaido was indeed awakened as the king of beasts should really be, if we're being honest. But that still doesn't explain what awakening truly is. I mean, from Doflamingo and Katakuri, we know that awakening one's devil fruit, at least naturally, requires a certain amount of power, as well as a great mastery of one's devil fruit ability. And we also know from Law and Kid that fighting in one's awakened state takes a huge toll on the user's body and energy and can only be used for a quite limited time. But the key here, I think, is Vegapunk's explanation. Devil Fruit powers basically tap into abilities that exist in different dimension. Yes, Oda literally uses the word different dimension in the manga, by the way. And Vegapunk also goes into even more detail with Luffy's Nika Fruit. He explains that even though Nika's name was erased from history, as long as people keep wishing for his existence, he can never be erased. So it does seem like eating a Devil Fruit means that a user not only takes on the abilities that have been wished for, 
but also the reason for why it was wished for in the first place. In other words, based on Vegapunk's explanation, Devil Fruit users seem to inherit the will of those who wished for the power in the first place. Kaido tells Luffy that awakening happens when the mind catches up to the Devil Fruit, and Oda himself had actually revealed something very similar to this in the Road to Laugh Tale booklets while the manga was on break. He explained to us that the downside of Zone Awakenings is that the innate nature of the animal can consume the user if they're not being careful. Which does seem to be exactly what happened with the guards at Impel Down or with Chopper when he completely loses control. And so I would say that this is something that actually seems to be quite dangerous for Luffy as well. If the Nika fruit is born by people wishing for it, then that explains Luffy's extremely strange behavior while in Gear 5. Let's look at why that is. Who's who, the person who was supposed to guard the Nika fruit for the government before it was then stolen by Shanks, tells Jinbei about Nika's history. Basically that he's that legendary figure that slaves pray to in the hope that they would bring smiles to their faces and free them from their suffering. He also mentions that he doesn't know whether or not he actually used to exist or if he was simply dreamed up. Which was of course perfect foreshadowing for this entire Devil Fruits are born from dreams reveal. So what seems to be happening here is that the essence of Nika is bringing smiles to people's faces and freeing them from their suffering. Now remember, when Luffy awakened, the citizens of Wano literally wished for just that, and it was Luffy's promise and purpose in his fight against Kaido to liberate the people of Wano. Therefore, Luffy could only awaken his Devil Fruit once he had truly embodied the essence of his Nika Devil Fruit. And so while he hasn't been overtaken by his fruit so far, like the Impel Down Jailers, he still seems to have become a different person in this state. I mean, let's look at the facts. Normally, Luffy takes big fights very seriously, but in his awakened state, he suddenly can't stop laughing and uses his powers in quirky ways that he seems to find amusing. And he does seem to take things a little bit too lightly as well, overseeing that Luchi is attacking Sentomaru for instance. Which I would argue could well be the true nature of the Sun God Nika trying to take him over. In other words, this might well be a major risk for Luffy going forward, losing control and having Nika slash Joy Boy literally come out instead. But of course, it's not only Luffy. Devil Fruits carrying the will of those who dreamed them up explains why pretty much any Devil Fruit user fits his fruit powers almost perfectly personality-wise. I mean, think about it. Doflamingo has the string fruit and is extremely manipulative. Yamato, who is the guardian deity of Wano, a dog, is extremely loyal, straightforward, and decides to put the safety of Wano over their desire to go out to sea. Both Big Mom and Mother Caramel had the soul soul fruit and both love to control people's lives and existence. Akainu has the magma fruit and is basically always boiling over with hot rage. The list goes on and on and on. So, Awakening one's devil fruit might simply mean becoming one with the original will and intention behind its creation. Maybe the one who dreamt of the string fruit wanted to control and manipulate things, and Doflamingo became so controlling and manipulative that he was able to tap into the fruit's full potential after being perfectly aligned with it. Or in Luchi's case, someone who would dream up a leopard would want to hunt and kill their prey. And I mean, Luchi was always a bloodthirsty hunter, and at some point I guess he just matched the nature of his devil fruit so perfectly that he could awaken it. And this also works really well with the idea that you have to master your devil fruit too, because mastering one's fruit means nothing else than using it in the way that it was meant to be used. So the only real question now is how exactly people People's dreams and wishes can be turned into actual physical abilities in the One Piece world. For that, I have personally translated Vegapunk's full lecture about Devil Fruits from Japanese and discussed this question and much, much more in a lot of detail in this video right here, so check that out if you're interested.